In this video today, we're gonna take a look at how we can create a great uh, weekend slash reverse word, and we're also gonna be able to control our sword attack while we are in the air. This video is the sixth episode of my 2D Metroidvania series. That is a series of like 15 to 20 videos on how to create a 2D Metroidvania with God of War 2. The asset is available in the description, and uh, you can also find in the description the link for my uh, my game Lone Knight that you can wishlist on Steam at the moment, which is a 2D Metroidvania that should be released normally this year this time and uh, you can also find my latest course where i am making a 2d rpg with a crafting system an inventory and a dialogue manager and also in that same course i am making as well an introduction to 3d in godot 4. but without further ado let's get started so now we're going to create an object that we can uh, slash with our sword. So for that, I'm going to go here to the plus and I'm going to create a new thing and I'm going to go to other nodes and I'm going to look for a static body 2D. That static body 2D, I'm going to rename it create. And uh, that static body is going to have a sprite 2D. It's going to have also a collision shape, obviously. It's going to also have an area 2D that's going to be uh, in charge of colliding with the sword and an area 2D going to also have a collision shape. My collision shape here, I'm going to rename it create underscore collider. And here, this one, area 2D, I'm going to rename it hitbox. And that collision shape right here, I'm going to rename it uh, hitbox underscore collider. So like this, it just makes more sense for me. The crate collider of the crate, I'm gonna put it as a rectangle. And the uh, hitbox collider of my actual hitbox here, I'm gonna put it on the circle, circle like this, and I'm gonna change the, sh the, the color. I'm gonna put something like this, and I'm gonna make it also a bit bigger. So I'm just gonna take that, and I'm gonna just make it bigger. I'm gonna come here on the select mode, and I'm gonna do something like this. I think this looks, this looks all right. So then the sprite 2D, here I'm going to go to it and I'm going to um, take a look at where my sprite is. So I need to go here to the sprite folder and for me it is in inter interactable and I have create animated right here. I'm going to drag it into my texture uh, empty slot. It shows all my crate and I have one, two, three, hold on. I've just made a move it uh, a little bit. So I, here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So to animation, I'm going to go here on H frame to eleven. And so like this, I have my, uh, my uh, sprite that display nicely. I'm just going to take my crate collider right here and I'm just going to reshape it to the size of my actual crate. And I'm just going to take also my hitbox collider and this one I'm going to reshape it a little bit also to the size of my crate. So like this, everything is good. And now the only thing that I need to have is that on my crate, I need to add an animation player as well. So this one right here, and I'm going to just rename it Anim. And here I just want to create two animations. So I'm going to have like active and I'm going to have uh, destroyed. So I'm clicking on animation, new, and then uh, I give the name that I want. So here I'm going to go first to my active and I go to sprite 2D. And here on frame, I'm just going to take the first frame and I'm going to create and that's it. And I'm going to put that at dot one like this. Or you can even leave it at one. That's doesn't matter that much to be fair uh, and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, in that animation here I just want to take the uh, crate collider right here and so I need to click on crate collider and here I need to make sure that it is uh, enabled per default so I click here on the keyframe create and that's good and so the hitbox hitbox collider we need to do the same as well and so we go to the hitbox collider and we make sure that it is also enabled so we click on uh, create and we have now our crate collider here uh, that's why i've renamed them like this because like this in the animation player i can see what is what it's way more convenient like this so now i can go to my destroy and on my destroy i go back to my sprite and here i'm gonna go to the uh, first frame right here i'm gonna key that and then I'm going to come here to the second frame. And here, after that, I just need to put it on three. And so now I can code the animation like this. So I just need to come here and I need to make sure that everything is displayed nicely like that. And so at one, uh, it should be good. So now I can come here and I can just make sure that my animation display nicely. Okay, perfect. So now that we have that, what I can do is I can make sure that this time here, I can uh, first disable the hitbox collider because I don't want to recollide uh, with my sword when my uh, object is destroyed. So here I need to go at the beginning 
Uh, here I need to disable my uh, hitbox collider from my sword area, from my uh, hitbox area here, and I need to make sure that it is disabled uh, like this. And then here, I think around here, I can disable my uh, crate collider as well, or maybe here actually. I can do something like this. Around here, I'm going to disable my crate collider. So here, I'm going to tick that on, key it, create, and here, I'm going to come here uh, and I'm going to. Uh, also, uh, um, uh, just like key the file that is, it is uh, disabled. And at the beginning, I'm just gonna actually do the opposite. So like this, I can still collide with my um, with my crate. So now let's see. Uh, okay, perfect. So now that we have that, what I can do is per default, I can put my active animation on auto load. And so now we are good to go. Uh, now the only thing that we need to do is like here on anim, we need to uh, the just like a uh, tick off this reset on save like this sometimes it makes it like a uh, uh, show weirdly in godot i don't know why uh, but that's something that I, that's a little thing that i found that is good so now we can save that scene so i can do Control s and i can put that into my scene folder which is right here and here i'm going to create a new folder that i'm going to call interactable like this and i'm going to save my crate around here so now what we need to do is that we need to create a script on our crate. So for that, I'm going to come here and uh, I'm going to just uh, create here a script. So I'm going to uh, click on the script icon and I'm going to go here and I'm going to put that script into my script folder, which is around here. And I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call interactable, interactable like this. And I'm going to save my uh, crate uh, script right here. So now what I want to do is here, uh, like uh, I'm doing nothing specifically, the only thing that I want to do is I want to connect what is called signal in Godot. So area 2D, if you click on it on our hitbox right here and you go to the inspector, inste instead of inspector here, you go to node and here you have signal. You can see that we have body enter, body exited, but here what we want to use is area enter because what we want here is like we want the area of our crate to enter in collision with the sword of our uh, player and our sword is itself an area 2D. So for that, we need to go back to our crate and I need to uh, be able to connect area enter. So I click on area enter. I'm going to click on connect and here I'm going to connect that signal to the uh, node in my scene that holds the script. So for me, it's my script, uh, my crate uh, folder here. So I'm going to click on connect. And now here what I can do is I can give to Godot uh, um, a set of order to do. So here, what I want to do is first, I want to Godot to check if area dot name is double equal to swear. If it's the case, uh, then I want it to destroy uh, my crate. So for that, I need to uh, get uh, my um, the reference to my animation player right here. So I need to do dollar sign anim dot uh, anim not anim <laughs> anim dot play. And here I need to get my destroyed animation like this. And then here it's not going to be enough. We need to call what is called a no wait, which is something that we use. It's a coroutine. And we use that to make sure that we display the animation before we destroy the object. So for that, we need to say await dollar sign anim dot animation finished. And then uh, when it's the case, then we can queue free our, uh, our object. So now with that code done, it's going to work. The only thing that is missing is that we need to make sure that our uh, object can collide with our hitbox. So uh, I'm going to go back to my player scene first and my sword, I'm going to go to collision right here. So I am on sword area and here I am on collision and I'm going to change the layer from one to three. And it's going to be able to, or actually, yeah, it's going to be able to collide with uh, four. So here I'm going to go to my project project setting. I'm going to go to my general uh, setting and I'm going to go to my uh, 2D physics right here. And you can remember that in the, I think it was in the time map video, we have already uh, given name to those things here. So here the layer three, we're going to call it sword and the layer four, we're going to call it interactables. So now that we have configured the sword uh, of our player, the sword collision layer of our player, we can go back to our crate. And here on hitbox, we can go to collision and we can put the layer instead of one, we can put it on interactable. 
and the mask, which is the object you're going to collide with, we can put it on the sword. So now we have done that, I need to make one last check, which is to make sure that I've spelled that right. So here it is swirl with a, capi a, a, a minuscule s, and so in my code, if I go back to my code, you can see that it is also a little s. So with that done, now I can just go back to my level 1, and here I can just go to my level 1 here, and I can just click on the chain icon and look for my crits, click on open. Now I can display my crit wherever I want it, so something like this for example. It's going to be good enough. And so let's have a look. I launch my uh, game. Can I collide with it? I can't collide with it. This is normal. It's because I forgot on the crate, I forgot to also change the collision layer. The collision layer on the crate is set to be on one and one. So it's set to be on player, which is not what I want. It's set to, it needs to be uh, set on ground. I'm going to use the same layer than ground. It's going to be fine. And it's going to collide with the player. So now we're going to be able to stand on it. So I'm going to come back here, we're going to be able to be blocked like that, we can stand on it, that's good. And so now, if I slash my uh, my crate, it should like this basically destroy my crate. So let's have a look. You can see that now we have destroyed the crate. So the sword system works. So that's perfect. So now there is one last thing that we need to do, which is uh, we need to make sure that we can also be using our sword when we are jumping, because for now we have some weird movement when we are jumping and using our sword. So for that it's very, very simple. The only thing that we need to do is we need to go to our player, player script right here, we need to go to the script right there, and when we have our input movement, what we need to do is at the end, before our move and slide, we also need to be calling our gravity force that we have created at the beginning of this uh, series. So our gravity force is right here, it's a function that is just handling the gravity of our uh, player, and so now we have done that, we have the basic for uh, having like a good little platformer that we can control like this. As you can see, everything works well. I can come here, I can use my swirl, everything is fine. So now that we have done that, now we can move on to the next lecture where we're gonna uh, start to add coins and we're gonna also create a GUI to display the number of flags that we have and the number of coins that we can collect and so on and so on. So I will see you in the next video. So that's it for me, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe. And me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!